Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is February 21st, 2020. My name is Lynn Marquardt, and I'm your host. Welcome. Tonight, we get to show you my dear Jane quilt that you have been seeing be worked on over the last seven years. Started in 2012, as everyone knows, and I finally, this past week, thanks to lots of friends' encouragement, was able to put the border on. So I still have a few, few little teeny tiny things to work on, a few little areas that need either an applique embellishment or there are a couple of the flags that need to be fixed with some fabric. For example, I don't know if you can see this, but this one right here wasn't big enough. I had forgotten a piece of fabric on the bottom and so I put white. And unfortunately, it doesn't have a nice crisp edge because all of the other, against the quarter inch piece that's right here around the whole quilt. If you make this quilt and you put the flags on, remember, Brenda Papadakis will tell you this in her book, make sure to put that quarter of an inch of the white all the way around your centerpiece. Otherwise, the flags don't quite fit. So anyway, things like that, that I have to fix that flag and make it the, put the green fabric so that I get a ni nice crisp delineation. Anyway, I just heard a, a ding. Hey, Chris says, holy Jane. Hi, Chris. Nice to know that you're out there. It was great to see you. You looked so skinny. Keep on doing what you're doing. I was in the middle of putting the corners on just an hour ago when Chris stopped by and brought me some dishes. So welcome and hi everyone. Hi Sue. Hi everyone. I can't see now that I, you can see that I have the camera in a different location. So thanks for joining me today. What we're going to do is rejoice number one in the fact that dear Jane is as far along as she is, and it's only February of 2020. We have until December, and I know there's still more work to do, but I'm feeling good, especially, hi, Cherish, especially because I don't have to bring Dear Jane to Missouri with me again. This quilt has gone to the Missouri Star Quilt Company retreat three times, I think, and every time I get there, and it just isn't exciting compared to all the other things I can be doing there. So, it doesn't have to go. And I do leave next Monday for Missouri. Hi, Pat. Thank you. Um, so what am I doing? What else are we going to do? We're going to prepare for a little mini mystery quilt that I'm doing tomorrow here in the studio. And I'm not leaving it. Michelle King, a friend of mine from Milford, is coming over. We have a couple of other people here. Hey, Maggie. <coughs> uh and there are just going to be four of us, my sister-in-law, Carol. And we are going to make this mystery. And she sent me the fabric requirements. And so I thought tonight I would iron those pieces of fabric. And I'll talk more about it in a minute. And cut them into fat quarters. That's what I'm supposed to have. But before we do that, I did want to encourage everyone to pick up your project. It's amazing what we can accomplish together in these next few minutes. And always feel free to email me at lynn at simplycolorful.com and share your pictures of what you're working on, and I will share them with everyone. Or you can always, which I like this even better, post it on the Simply Colorful Mystery Quilts Along group. That's where we all share this, these uh, various quilts, which is such fun. I also wanted to share with you a quilt, a baby quilt that we finished and talk about what happened on this day in history, including I have a little tidbit about NASCAR. So if anyone out there likes NASCAR, stay tuned. Okay, so let's pull up the fabric requirements for this mystery. Basically, it's not gonna be very exciting what we do today, getting this fabric ready, and none of us are gonna know what the mystery is. But next week, I will show you what we do tomorrow, if that makes sense. Or, and I'll try and post pictures on the Simply Colorful Quilt Along during the day tomorrow so that you can see as we go. But let me see what, what was sent. 
<laughs> and I'm sorry, everyone, that I'm missing breakfast on Sunday, Jean and Lima and Kelsey and Joyce and everyone who's out there. Hi, Dawn, if you're out there. Hello, and Cindy. Okay. Main body of the quilt. I need 12 fat quarters, 12 fat quarters, and three quarters of a yard of contrasting fabric for bars, whatever that means. So I do have this brassica fabric that I just love from my sister. She gave it to me for Christmas. It's a kaif. And it will be a shame to cut it up into bars. I assume that's, but I thought that I was, I would use it because it goes contrast so nicely with these purples. And I have these purples that I want to cut into, and I have a lot of this purple. So, and I do have someone in mind for this purple quilt and it's a graduation present. And so what I thought I would do today is just see if I have 12 of these purples big enough to create a fat quarter piece, which is what, 18 inches by 22 inches? Oh, I'm so glad everyone's out there. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can see this. I have some pieces that aren't really fat quarters, so it may not work like this gingham. So hopefully I don't need that. And I've got my iron here. So we're basically ironing, but that's part of the quilting process, right? Oh, and I have a t-shirt quilt on the, my gamble right over there that came from Cynthia Gabler, Geb Gebler. So thank you, Jean, for the referrals. She saw it on Hopkinton on Common or somewhere online. Okay, so here's one. Huh. Not very well ironed. Oh, and I've been using my best press. Where is it? I'm almost out of it. I'm gonna have to get some more of that. That is good stuff. Okay, here's another one. So who else is making quilts for events that are happening this spring? I know Deb has made some baby quilts. In fact, she has, she was invited to a, I don't, and I think she'd be okay if I shared this. She's been invited to a baby shower for twins twin girls, and she made the cutest disappearing nine patch quilts, baby quilts. She used one similar fabric and then made one in teals and one in purples. And then she used the same minky backing, a pink, and then she outlined it or put the border on with another matching binding that was striped. And they were striking. So I like the idea of making them different, but similar, if that makes sense. How fun is that? Okay, so here's three. Some of this fabric is not that high quality, but that's okay. That's okay. What I think I'm gonna do is quilt it very tightly and give it a good wash before I give it away. So it'll have that very tight, look and it will be fine so we have one two three that that is assuming i like the mystery quilt that we do tomorrow but i'm sure i will okay that one's a little bit shorter but it'll still work i think heck if we have fun tomorrow maybe we can do it on on fibercast I'll ask Michelle. Oh, I love this one. Oh, and our charity quilt program. I don't know if I shared with everyone that 
The Marathon Quilters Guild, of which I'm part, is making quilts this year for the Tufts Children's Hospital, the floating hospital. And I think we've even gotten it down to we're going to bring the quilts in March. And I have a few that I still have to quilt and bind. Um, but we do have a date, so that's good. And we have lots of beautiful quilts that have been made by members of the guild. It's such a generous group of people. I also heard that the Marathon Quilters raffle quilt is hanging down at Ryko Trim. So if anyone down in Rhode Island, just so you know, if you spend $100 there, Ryko and her team there will give you a free raffle ticket. So buy a chance if you're down there. Don't forget to ask for that. That's pretty. I'm not really sharing this, am I? I'm sorry. There's one. This one's pretty. I'm sorry. Two. Three. So I had a funny conversation with my mother. I don't know if she's out there. Hi, Mom, if you're there. She might be at a play or she's always out and about, which is great. <laughs> I was talking to her today and I was bragging, as I want to do, about the fact that I worked 10 straight days. And she, she was, wow, she was impressed. And she said, I didn't know that you worked Saturday and Sunday. And I had to correct myself and say, no, no. What I meant was I, I worked my five-day work weeks, but for two weeks, basically, I didn't call in sick <laughs> or take a voluntary time off. That's big for me. That's the VTO I always talk about, which I love about this job. <laughs> it made her giggle. I'm not sure my mother has ever taken, oh, that's too bad that that's not a fat quarter. I'm not sure she's ever taken a sick day. Or if she has, she's been really sick. And when your mom doesn't get sick very often, I don't know what you guys think about this, but when you have a mother that doesn't get sick very often, when she does get sick, it throws everything out of kilter. Like the world, the access, the world on the access is tipped or something's just not right. Okay. I hope these co I think these colors will be good for a graduation quilt. Huh. I think they're contemporary enough. I tried to pull out contemporary fabrics. Oh, beauteous. They'll all need another iron, but oh, look at that. That's a half yard. So what I can do is I'm just going to cut it. Oh, who's out there? Again, send pictures or post them. Hi, Mom. Okay. Chris, you're so funny. Holy Jane. I hope you are resting, Christine. So I reread Animal Farm by... Um, Oh, geez. Is it Orson Welles? Who wrote Animal Farm? Hang on. I can't tell. I can't do that. What a great story that is. Makes you think. 
I never did read 1984, so I have that on um, George Orwell. Jeez, Orson Welles. <laughs> this is why I move packages for a living now. So Animal Farm, very good book. couple of 30s fabric. I think this came from Christine Myers. Oh, you know what's fun about my dear Jane? I wanted to tell everyone that a lot or some of the fabrics in here have come from you. For example, Sue Norton, the back of your ABC quilt was that pretty blue and one of the sides there was extra, there was like that much. And I took that off before I sent it back to you. And I used that extra fabric down here. In that flag. Isn't that cool? And so in my diary, I say that came from Sue Norton. Similarly, Jean, this came See that very light blue batik? That's the same fabric that you're using on your king size quilt for the cape that Christine's gonna quilt for you, I think. Then over here is a blue that I got from Kelsey at the retreat. And I did that square and realized I'd already done a square in another one, or I mean a um, triangle. So I kept both triangles. So that's the uniqueness of mine is that I have two matching triangles. And Sue Norton, I know I'm supposed to look at your quilt and see what is different. And I've not done that yet. So I owe you an answer. It sounded like a nice puzzle. Anyway, there are others. There are other pieces in there from over the years. My only thought, well, so I'm pretty excited now that Dear Jane is done. It feels good. It feels fun. The look is growing on me, and um, I'm even thinking of possibly hanging it in our stairwell of our house. I think it might fit. We have a funny-shaped house that has... A big wall up going up the stairs. <coughs> Hi, Carol. Hello, Lynn and Fibercasters. Congratulations on finishing your Dear Jane quilt. So many patterns and so many fabric pieces. Happy ironing, Carol O. Ha! Do you believe it? Oh, here's another half yard that I'm going to cut right down. The, so would I ever do another Dear Jane? Hell no. <laughs> if I knew now what I knew then, would I ever start it? Nope. But I have lots of memories. Like I remember, when was it? Four years ago, mom, laying it out on your living room floor and counting how many we still needed doing that inventory. Like I say, I've, it's been to Missouri three times. My sister and I looked at it. I think I laid it out at her house. Anyway, enough about that. What other quilts are people working on or other fiber arts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. Yay. Okay, and I didn't even have to use this. I think I can use this then maybe for, maybe for the backing or for a border. I was thinking it would be kind of neat to get one of these pinks or these, but we'll see. First, we have to see what the mystery quilt looks like. Yes, I have seen it months ago. 
so I have a vague idea. And um, but of course, I can't remember any of the specifics. So it will be fun. <coughs> All right. Now I do have an alternative colorway that I wanted to share with you. Also, if <laughs> it's these oranges that I keep coming back to. KB's probably laughing because I, I t tend to just gravitate toward orange. It's not like I have any orange in my house, really. But I thought the orange and yellow and red with black might be kind of Halloween-y or striking. But I'm just going to leave those out and see how tomorrow goes. Oh, also, speaking of baby quilts, I wanted to show you a quilt that we did that Katie Miller made. It's a cute baby quilt. It's a good size baby quilt. So it could go into their toddler time. I hope you can see that. It's quilted with an I love you heart pattern. Very simple and sweet. The backing is a, it says cherish. The backing is, let's see, I'll tell you the, the line of fabric. It's called Under the Mistletoe by Annie Downs of Hatched and Patched for Henry Glass Company. It's very sweet. Katie happens to be in Florida for at least the month of February. But we will get this to her in March. I still haven't cut it down. So... And I love hearing from everyone. Wendy, thank you for the, the referral. I have, I'm just thrilled with, with the people that I'm meeting and their quilts. It's really fun for me. Okay, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, I know. I want to talk about history. And then we might, we might just have a 30-minute fiber cast. Okay, so I, I gave George Orwell Animal Farm. I gave my, you want to know what else is on my iPad? Probably not. Send me or post what you're reading. Hi, Carol. Oh, Carol Bell. I am so, I've been thinking a lot about you. Carol has, her company has been bought by someone else. So, and I'm glad to hear you survived that all. That is, there's a lot going on. Who's there? Jean. Oh, you got it. She says, I'm going to need a picture of that last quilt. I will do that for you. In fact, I have it right here. Done. <laughs> oh, it's so I'm so glad everyone's out there. So put book recommendations if you have any there. I'm still a novice reader. I definitely, I'm still figuring out what I like, and I have a short attention span. Like I have David Sedaris. <coughs> I keep rereading his or re-listening. Theft, Theft by Finding Diaries. I have Bill Bryson, A Walk in the Woods, and I have The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. Aw, thanks, Jean. Let's see. Okay, so. Oh, this day in history. In addition to finishing Dear Jane in 2020, other things also happened, like in 1952, in the figure skating world, Dick Button won his second Olympic figure skating gold. That was big. He captured his first gold prize at the 1948 Olympics, becoming the first American to ever take home the men's title. Wow. Okay. In 1972, President Nixon went to China for talks. And it's 
According to, again, history.com, in an amazing turn of events, President Richard Nixon takes a dramatic first step toward normalizing relations with the Communist People's Republic of China. He did it by traveling to Beijing for a week of talks. Nixon's historic visit began the slow process of reestablishing diplomatic relations between the United States and Communist China. Still mired in the unpopular and frustrating Vietnam War in 1971, Nixon surprised the American people by announcing a planned trip to the People's Republic of China in 1972. The United States had never stopped formally recognizing the PRC after Mao Zedong's successful communist revolution in 1949. In fact, the two nations had been bitter enemies. They fought in Korea during the early 1950s. Um, Chinese aid and advisors supported North Vietnam in its war against the United States. Nixon seemed an unlikely candidate to thaw those chilly relations. Uh, he'd been a vocal cold warrior, condemned Harry Truman, the Democrat, for losing China to the communists in 1949. Um, but things changed. And now I'm getting down into the weeds here. Thank you. Who was that? Who just texted me? Oh, here we go. Oh, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. How are you doing? Are you in the floods or are you away from the water? Sandra in Mississippi. Sandra says, congratulations. Great job. It is beautiful. I don't even know where my blocks are since I moved in November, which didn't kill me, but close. Oh, I've not sewed as I can't find anything. Oh, my sewing room partially set up, but my helpers have crammed everything in closets and the attics, and I'm just overwhelmed. I get that. The, so... We can fix this. Yes, it will get better when weather warms up. Wind chill here this morning in the teens and just too cold for me to function. Have a great weekend, Sandra. Oh, Sandra, I've been thinking of you. Thank you for writing in. Um, I know what you mean about being overwhelmed. I, if you looked in the studio, you can see there were, it's better now. I had piles of things and they were just, encroaching just coming in on me so i made a concerted effort actually it was thanks to deb linehan who was doing 12 days of purging or chores like and it, and she said just break it down into little steps like one day clean one drawer another day gee and she had some good examples none of which i've done by the way <laughs> but it sounded good but i did tackle my sewing room the same way. I just picked one area and I said, today I'm going to clean that up and that'll be done. So, oh, Sandra, I'm so glad. I'm glad that you've lived through the move and hopefully, you know, maybe a little crocheting or a little knitting or just making a dishcloth or something. But both, most of all, I'm just so glad you could join us. So have a great weekend. I still have the card you sent me, the little prayer card when Bob fell. I have all the gifts that everyone has given me, by the way. So thank you. Okay. Oh, more history. I'll stop talking about President Nixon going to China. So we did we did that in 1972. What happened? Oh, now what happened? Hello. History. Okay, it's loading. Back in 1885, the Washington Monument was dedicated in honor of America's revolutionary hero and first president, President Washington. The, oh, no, where's Malcolm? Malcolm X was assassinated on this day. I'll read a little more about that in a minute. Yep, yeah. in 1965. So in New York City, Malcolm X, an American African nationalist and religious leader, is assassinated by rival black Muslims while addressing his organization of Afro-American unity at the Audubon Ballroom in Washington Heights. I don't think they've ever really found who did that. 
Uh, let's see. Ah, NASCAR. In 1948, NASCAR was founded. So on February 21st, 1948, the National Association of Stock Car Racing, or NASCAR, as it will come to be widely known, is officially incorporated. NASCAR racing will go on to become one of America's most popular spectator sports, as well as a multi-billion dollar industry. And I'm going to load it and talk about it more because I'm, as you know, I'm, I'm getting a bit more into NASCAR. Um, in fact, last week's Daytona 500, mom and I were talking, Ryan Newman, who had a crash in the last lap of the Daytona 500, was a bad crash. He, mom said he walked out of the hospital. So he is, has gone home. I don't know what his injuries were per se. I'm not sure they're saying that. I haven't looked it up, but that was really good news because that was quite a crash. But anyway, back to the fun part of NASCAR and the thrill of NASCAR. It says, and the fact that it was founded back in 1948 on this day, it says the driving force behind the establishment of NASCAR was William Bill France Sr., a mechanic and auto repair shop owner from Washington, D.C., who in the mid-1930s moved to Daytona Beach, Florida. The Daytona area was a gathering spot for racing enthusiasts, and French became involved in racing cars and promoting races. In fact, I think, didn't they even race on the sand? Or am I making that up? After witnessing how racing rules could vary from event to event and how dishonest promoters could abscond with prize money, France felt there was a need for a governing body to sanction and promote racing. He gathered members of the racing community to discuss the idea, and NASCAR was born. France served as NASCAR's first president and played a key role in shaping its development in the sport's early decades. NASCAR held its first strictly stock race on June 19, 1949 at the Charlotte Speedway in North Carolina. Wow. Some 13,000 fans were on hand to watch Glenn Dunaway finish the 200-lap race, first in his Ford. However, Jim Roper, who drove a Lincoln, collected the 2,000 prize after Dunaway was disqualified for illegal rear springs on his vehicle. Wow. And it goes on. Let's see. What else happened on this day? Uh... It might be about, yeah, let's see. I don't know what this is. In 1916, the Battle of Verdun begins. A shot from German Krupp, 38-centimeter long-barreled gun, bombarded French forces across the Meuse River, striking cathedral in Verdun, France. Beginning the Battle of Verdun, V-E-R-D-U-N. I know. If you weren't asleep before, you are probably falling asleep right now. I know, you guys. Uh, the Battle of Verdun would stretch on for 10 months and became the longest conflict of World War I. Wow. In the, by the beginning of 1916, the war in France, from the Swiss border to the English Channel, had settled into the long slog of trench warfare. Despite the hard conditions in the trenches, Eric von Falkenhayn chief of staff of the German army, believed that the key to winning the war lay not in confronting Russia in the east, but in defeating the, the French in a major battle on the Western Front. Ugh, too much over my head. Okay. So I think those are the main highlights on what happened in this day. February 21st, 2020, what happened? We finished Dear Jane. So... And we prepared for tomorrow's mystery quilt. I think that's all I have. I will be broadcasting either back here next Friday or somewhere en route from Missouri or maybe from Missouri. So with that, thank you all for joining me and sharing the information about Simply Colorful. Thanks for sending in your quilts. I'm always thrilled to do your quilts on my gamble. And let's keep her running. And... With that, just do what you love. Do something for yourself. It's very important. <laughs> I think that's it. Have a good weekend, everyone. And thanks for joining me. Bye.